Hello and welcome. In this session, we'll be discussing the main types of certificates for the Avanti Cloud Services Appliance and what they do. There are three main types of certificates being used by the Cloud Appliance. Uh, these are core certificates, um, the actual appliance certificate, which involves and includes a third party certificate to secure communications between your devices, uh, the outside world, and of course your core server and your CSA and then client certificates, which is a certificate that enables communication between your endpoint agent and the CSA. And then from there, it gets sent through using the core certificate for communication between the core, um, core server and your uh, CSA, and, and of course, then the endpoint on the other side. Um, so the core certificate is added by adding your CSA to your Ivanti endpoint manager core server. Um, this can be done within the Endpoint Manager Admin Console, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute here. Um, then the next type of certificate we've got is your built-in LDM, LDMG certificates. Um, these are self-signed, and these are always a part of the CSA. Um, you can remove them. It shouldn't adversely affect anything. And in fact, when you add a new certificate, a third-party certificate, Ivanti recommends that you do remove these and then reboot the CSA device. Uh, once rebooted, though, you'll notice that the self-signed certificates reappear. This is by design, this is by nature, and that's nothing to worry about. Um, Third-party certificates will allow secure communication between wherever you're connecting from via web browser or from the actual endpoint device, and um, we'll get rid of that message that you see that tells you that the connection is not secure. Third-party certificate is absolutely required if you're going to be doing any kind of mobile device management. Uh, so let's say you want to manage your iPads, iPhones, uh, Android devices, you will need a third-party certificate. A note that I'll add here is that a third-party certificate cannot be a wildcard certificate. So it must actually contain the name of your CSA device, and this will be the public name. So your public DNS fully qualified name of the CSA device. Um, the first step in adding a third-party CSR would be to create a CSR. Once this screen comes up, um, simply fill out your relevant organization, country, state or province, uh, city information. Uh, this is going to be used with your ISP to generate the third-party certificate. Um, this will provide you with an encrypted certificate that states your organization name, um, and it's required for, uh, ISP, for your, by your ISP for security reasons. Um, once filled out and your network administrator should be able to give you this information, simply create. This will generate a text, an encrypted text file for you, which you then need to supply to your third party um, ISP. Once they receive this, they can then generate the certificate that's needed. Uh, they will then send you a file back. From there, you would need to open that certificate, export it, and then we would simply come and import it. And to import, we would come back here, we would do add LDMG certificate. You would simply copy and paste the contents of the certificate that was sent through by your ISP or your provider. Uh, click save. Once that's saved in, uh, reboot the, uh, remove the two uh, Ivanti certificates, reboot your CSA, and you should now have your third party certificate in place. For the core server certificate, uh, this is actually done by adding the CSA details to the core server. To do that, you need to open up your management console. Simply click on configure, manage cloud services appliances. And in here, in your case, this may be blank. If it is, once you add your uh, CSA details on the right, it will actually generate this and the certificate status will show as posted. To add it, it's fairly straightforward. You just need the CSA public name. You need the CSA public IP address. The password will be the password for the service account, which is generally the same as the admin account. You may need to make a change there if needed. Your uh, CSA admin, if it's not you, will be able to help you out with that. Um, check the box, use internal address. Uh, add your internal name, which is the host name, as well as the FQDN domain name for the CSA, and of course, the internal IP address. If you have multiple CSAs, which you can have, you can add, um, I want to say unlimited, but uh, nobody's ever done that, I don't think. Um, so a lot of places would use three or four CSAs. 
Um, you just need to select whichever is the default. Um, you do have to have a default. It will not let you save the CSA if you do not have a default. Uh, once you're done, you simply click apply. That posts the certificate over to the uh, CSA and the call server and the CSA can now communicate. The last type of certificate that we're going to be looking at is the client certificate. Uh, this is automatically done. So once the agent is deployed to a device and it references your CSA, um, it will use broker config to generate a certificate. Um, the certificate will come into a list here. Now, by default, out of the box, this is not actually um, being approved. So you may see, unless depending on how your device has been set up, you may see here that a lot of devices are unapproved, in which case you will need to come in and manually approve them, um, not so much to generate the certificate, but to approve the communication with the certificate between the client device and the CSA device, and ultimately the core server device. Uh, so that's the three main certificates that's being used by the CSA on the Avanti endpoint side. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and if, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out at us at NCSI. Thank you.